Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Encoding overloaded. What the hell? Encoding overloaded. My butt. Oh, come on, what is this? Celeron? How pathetic. Alright, okay, everyone. Let's see, I'm half falling asleep, living off three and a half hours of um, sleep in the last 24. It's not really the best way to do business. In fact, I sincerely do not recommend it one bit. Anyway, we've got a job that's come in. It's an iPhone 6S. It's um, supposedly was working. Uh, uh, I like my brain. And then it just got hot and died. So here's hoping that the got hot and died bit isn't the Wi-Fi chip. They didn't specify whereabouts it got hot. They just said on the back. So um, who knows? Uh, the reason why I don't want it to be the Wi-Fi chip is because this is success, which means I can't replace it because I do not have a programmer for such things. Alrighty. Let's see who we've got. We've got Dragon, Ed, AJ, Mara, and Cormac's here. Hello, Cormac. And, uh, of course, Sync, really. Yeah, alright. Honestly, I swear I'm going to have to get myself an i7 or something at the rate that this thing's going. I don't understand why I have these sync issues. I don't know whether it's OBS that's at fault or what. All I know is that it's a pain. Okay, are my lights are on? Yep. Okay, let's get into this. See what's going on. Looks like there's already a crack on the tempered glass, or maybe it's a crack under the tempered glass. So maybe they added it after the fact. I guess we'll find out. Hopefully we don't have to replace the screen as well. Yeah, it kind of feels like this has never been opened. So we'll get our overhead view, that would help. Hey Robin, hey Metabolus 3X, Tektronics 101, hello. Okay, and Mr. Sodder Bridge. Okay, so we're using my specially crafted end of this spudger, so that's extremely fine, and just cuts right through that, uh, right through the adhesive that holds these things down. First time you do an iPhone success, it's always a little bit daunting. But if you have a modified spudger to cut through the adhesive, it's all good. Alright, this is definitely pristine, except for the fact that it's got a fingerprint there. That could be factory installed fingerprint. And a bit of iffy stuff on the sim tray. There seems to always be something on the sim tray. I don't know why. Maybe that gets installed separately in the reflow process or something and they manually handle it. Who knows. Okay. Well, we'll now taint the poor thing so that we don't accidentally long screw. Let's get this thing apart. I wonder if this is a refurb or something. Okay. Let's see, my zoom is out, is it? Or let's see. No, we don't want to zoom in me. No. I was thinking of getting one of those Logitech 4K cameras, the um, Brio or whatever they're called. They do seem to work with Linux and OBS. And while I wouldn't stream at 4K, they would provide at least a good uh, level of magnification that I can use. They're only about $250, so could be worse. Okay. 
Okay, that looks fairly okay. I'm gonna have a look over the board here, see if anything is obvious. Got a 5S board, that's perfect. What could I do with it? Yeah, good question. I mean, 5S is still a f functional phone. Alright, so that's pretty normal to get that sandwiched in there. I'm just looking for any possible telltale signs of anything like liquid or perhaps physically dropped. This is weird. I don't normally see this. This is... what is this? It's like... Is this a fake case or something? Don't normally see engravings like that. Okay, so we've got no long screw. Not that we were expecting any long screw, but yeah. We don't appear to have any charring on any of the pins, no discoloration. For all intents and purposes, it's pretty much a pristine phone. Hey, Travis. Probably OBS. Uh, well, I guess we'll find out. Let's see if we've Let's see what our resistance across the battery terminals is. Hey, shot to ground. We're looking for one of you. Point four. That's definitely not a significant short there. Try the other way around. Okay, so we don't appear to have any notable short on the ground. There is a little chip out of the camera here. Uh, maybe something to note for later. Let's get our octopus out. And see what sort of current we're drawing. So 6S, 8P, 7, 6, naturally it's not any of the ones I've got there. Success, success P. okay. Hey Julian Fox from Melbourne, eh? How's it going down there? Oh man. That was a little unexpected. The cord was a bit shorter than I expected. Okay. Alright, immediately I get a fairly high current. It's five, six hundred, so something's cooking up there. Okay, 600 milliamps without even trying to turn it on, so... Hopefully we can find this without too much drama. So let's just get the board out. There's no point pretending that we're going to be able to fix this with it in. Hey Panov, how's it going? Aren't you supposed to be doing studies or something? Now we start the long process of taking all the damn screws out just so we can get the motherboard out. To be fair, at least it is a screw process as opposed to a glue and catch and stuff like that. Really, I don't know why people complain about iPhones being difficult to service compared to... When I mean, you try to get something like a HTC One or a I think one of the latest oppos or anything. And you try to get those disassembled without needing 50 million bits of tape and glue.
potato land and cyber squirrels. <laughs> hey, Buck Dai, welcome. Uh, we're gonna get our proper socket remover for that. The number of times I've had people do damage to the board trying to get this iPhone 6s hex head out. So just get the right tool for it. And even if you don't have the right tool for it, you should still be able to get it out with a pair of flat nose pliers. And if you can't, then um, yeah, reconsider things. Hey Pedro, how's it going? See, Julian Fox, you got 50 milliliters of rain this evening. 50 milliliters, that's not much. Then again, if you got 50 millimeters, that'd be a decent one. Ah, I always forget this about the 6S. Anyway, no, that's, that's good that you guys have got a decent amount of rain. We just got about 4, maybe 5 millimeters. Enough to settle the dust down, but not much more than that. Which means tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock it'll be a furnace. A nice little sauna for us, actually. Not a furnace. Hey, Tranquil the Cat. Sonia. It's Jason is in here, is it? Hello, Jason. What do you use Himio stats for? Oh, you use it for getting those hex things out. Good God, Jason. Get yourself a proper tool, man. Aren't you supposed to be like a representative of the proper way of servicing things? Alright. This hopefully will be... We're crossing our fingers that this is not the Wi-Fi chip. Because if it's a Wi-Fi chip, then I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it off. That's it. And power. 600. Mother of God, it's the Wi Fi chip. Okay, <sighs> here we go. Let's have a look at the Wi Fi chip. Oh, look at that. Straight it, actually, maybe it's not the Wi Fi chip. Maybe it's something else. It is in that corner and it is hot. Mm. It's not to say it's one of the caps there. Okay, looks like we've got some damage down there. We've got some solder balls popping out. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping, Stratton, the cap next to it. But we, like I said, we do have some solder balls popping out there, so that's not the best sign. But we'll measure that cap next to it and pray to all that is good and holy that it's the short and not the Wi-Fi. But the success is known for doing the Wi-Fi issues lately. Boo! It's the Wi-Fi. Well, that just sucks. Yeah, it's always the Wi-Fi, I see. I know, I know. God damn it. Alright, uh, well I guess at this point my question is going to be what is the... Oh, damn, I left the alcohol dispenser upstairs. That's no good. What is the way I can... Is there a way I can disable the Wi-Fi chip on the 6S without physically removing it? The other thing I can do is just try and drill into that chip and see if I can't... Yeah, maybe it's just a dead cap in the chip. I'm pulling this off because it's going to get melted off anyway. Yeah, I know, Rodrigo, those EEPROMs are... That's one of the other things I'm worried about. You're talking about this little chap here, yes. Why did it have to be the Wi-Fi?
I blame Jason. You'd think for such an important piece of hardware, that Wi-Fi, um, the EEPROM, that they would make it a little more prominent. And maybe have like a warning sign on it or something. Say, so do not lose me. Do not crack me. Do not do anything naughty to me. Yeah. Just trying to get the instantaneous... It's very hot, whatever it is, and it's just around about here. So what's the verdict? If we were grinding... Hey, Swiftrick, Giffney. Some of these are get away of carving a small hole and severing the yeah. see what have I got for I can use my Dremel it's small LDO great what is the LDO power someone's taken my Dremel yeah Dremel 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 oh, there it is When I see this due to a short down the line, mm. hey Jimbo. Alright, so what are you saying, Jason? That the short isn't actually on that corner, it's the LDO just generating a lot of heat because it's having to. Something else is shorting the line, but um, the LDO has to basically dissipate all that heat. So really, even if we... Um, yeah, it's not actually going to fix the short. Because, I mean, LDOs will, of course, drop a lot of heat, since they've got to drop the voltage down to whatever you require, and if you're asking for full current, there's an IC that creates some line. Oh, great. So, Jason, do you still recommend, though? This is it's for 10 points. Jason, do you still recommend grinding it out? Hey, Wayne Taylor. Hey, Sonia. Hey, John. John White. There's an IC in the IC. Yes. Uh, let's see. Let's have a look at these. This collection here of random bits and pieces. I'm trying to find something that might be useful. Hmm. Choices. Yeah, it's actually a bit butchery, that one. I'll try a bit of smaller one. I'm supposed to have an extremely fine diamond one here, but I can't find it. Oh wait, there it is. Uh, these are cheap and nasty ones. These are the slightly better ones. Evening pool, how? Yes, these are diamond coated bits. I'm not going to use these just yet, because this is also a diamond cut bit, but it's an extremely small one. It's about half millimeter diameter. And let's see. We're definitely going to put the fume hood on. Uh, Andre James, no, it's a commercial one. Let's put this in a holder.
Now the worst thing about this is that for me to test this every time I have to take it out of the holder and apply the power. When I figure out the short, when I figured out the short, I put power in on the cap line short next to the LDO and it was hot. Which led me to an FL filter on down the line. Sounds like Jason got more serious than I did. Okay, I just want to see that I'm in the right vicinity to start with. Yep, pretty much right on the mark. Let's see if I can just hold this board in with the power lead connected. I don't think I'm going to have much luck, but we'll try. Yeah, that might work. Let's see if it still works. Yep. I might get okay there it is there I can already see it you can see the blue shiny top there we go so that'll be our LDO oh yeah I might switch to the exacto knife I wonder if I can solder this out of here. Or whether that's just asking for too much. Like, can I maybe grind away the, f the rock fill around it? and then lift the part out So what does what does everyone else do? Does everyone else just like break it out or do we have more of a feeling approach to it? Respect and care for it, the fact that it actually hasn't done anything wrong. It's just been asked to do impossible things. You leave it in there, it's good. Yeah, but Jason, how do you find out where the real fault is? I guess that's my question is, it's like, okay, we've got it, but how do you find out where the real fault is? So we can disable it. Give it aspirin bed rest. <laughs> There's a cap next to it. Okay, I can see two caps. 
And you're saying one of those is the fault. Do you know which one it is? Whether it's the one to the right here or the one above? I'm looking for a three axis one though, not anything fancy. Yeah, there's one cat. The short is probably one centimeter from my hole. Okay. Well, I really don't want people sniffing around my holes. We'll just try and scratch this away and get access to uh, the end cap. I guess the next question is, what voltage is it? Yeah, I can see the other cap up here. Whoa, why are you blue? Well, I'll test this one first. Okay, that's given us enough we can test at least to see if that one. Yeah. You know, Jason, I wouldn't do that anyway. And looks like that's an open line. So that's fine, so it's probably the other one. Hey, Tom Love. So when this is done, what do you use to cover it back up? Um, I don't really bother covering these up. It really does become just a data recovery job. Unfortunately, I don't have the equipment and I don't really care to have the equipment that's required to let you put a new um, chip on, a new module rather. With the 6 it's not a problem because the 6 you can just put a new module on, there's no dramas. But with the 6S they're bound, you've got to reprogram the NAND or something like that. Dad mate please. Didn't you see do like one forward street? What? Um, Ed, not quite the same. No. Uh, here's the fun thing is, which side of this cap is actually ground? Now you can't actually... Uh, I don't have the really good meter to do this. I do have a low ohms meter that would actually let me know. But uh, we're just going to have to try our luck and see if we can see a difference in resistance. Shoot. Just chip the hell out of that thing. So we stabilized down at 0.15 for that. Now what about this? Okay, well as we see this one here is 0.56. So that would sort of indicate that this side is likely the positive rail. Now we can sort of double check that below. We stick our probe onto the shield. And you see if we're on the shield it goes 0.15 sort of thing. 
so that there tends to indicate that the inner, tra uh, inner pad of that cap is the true ground and this is the VCC line 0.55 is the cap shorter of the LDO? Um, apparently, according to the elders of the internet experts, Jason SDS in channel here, it's actually somewhere else entirely that's shorted. So what we need to do is we need to get some power into there. And I'm going to say one volt should be more than enough. Uh, the fun thing is going to be getting the wire onto that. I should be thankful because this actually means this is going to be an interesting stream. Now yeah, I'll get some of my Litz wire. I like this stuff a bit more than the... Okay. Honestly, you can probably find the short on this with as little of uh, half a watt, quarter of a watt even would be enough. So you really don't need much at all. But what I really do need is a shield for me to damn it, do some solder stripping. Come on. Now, whenever you don't want random bits of metal on the desk, they're everywhere. You know, random bits of shield and stuff like that. And then when you do need them, they're nowhere. We're going to use this here as my solder shield. Oh, there it is there. God damn. That also happens a lot. You give up on the universe and you go, fine, I'm going to just use some random piece of junk around here. And the universe pulls the whole troll face on you and goes, hur, 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 just kidding, bro, there it is there, it's all yours. Just had to have some fun with you. It's all jokes, man, it's all jokes. You're cool. Didn't mean anything by it, just wanted to laugh. And so, get stuffed, universe, get stuffed. I don't know why I'm trying to produce a long run of tinned wire there. I only need that short piece. No thermal cam. Don't need a thermal cam. It's outrageous. It's going to be fairly outrageously obvious where it is when it shows up. Because we already know what vicinity we're in. And we know that it's a fairly hard short. So it's not going to require a lot. Okay, first I need to tin that pad. Yeah, and IPA is cheap. It's it's really not going to be difficult to get this to show up at all. The hardest bit is just going to be getting everything ready to put the power in to show it. Okay, I'm not going to leave it touching the top. You bunch of paranoid so-and-sos.
whenever I do stuff like this, the image that goes through my mind, the um, mem image, is that one of those um, kids completely losing their heads. There's like a group of five of them or something, and they're like, got their one of them's like got their face there going, and they're like rolling over, things like that. That's what I imagine when I do stuff like this, and people are like, "Oh my God, he's going to leave that there. He's not going to. He's going to short it all out and kill it." It's like, relax. Yeah, concerned viewers, sure. Yeah, now the harder part of this is actually connecting it up to something to put the power in. I kind of want to tie it down somewhere. Maybe some captain tape. Jason, I make sure they are entirely ESD safe by charging them up with electrons before I use them so that they don't need any more electrons and so they just stay out of the way uh, apparently I wasn't born yesterday mind you if I was that'd be something okay so the exposed area of the wire is now safely there and we're also protecting the wire from getting snared and ripping the end off that cap. But now I have to actually tin this end. I should have done this before I did everything but it's too late now. Who sings that song? Oh god, that's a Justin Bieber song. It's isn't it? Or is it Timberlake? It's too late to change it now. Was that someone stores it? Store my ESD tools in my vacuum cleaner. Excellent. Make sure you run the vacuum cleaner up at high speed. Vacuum up styrofoam before you um, put it to use. Yeah, falsetto, stuff that. If I'm going to go falsetto, I'll at least try to be the Bee Gees. Staying alive, staying alive. Ah, ah, ah. Did we get it? We got it. Good. Created ourselves a little eyelet of solder. Just there. Ah, uh, let's see. Now what? We also need a ground. We also need to take this out. Can you buy a thin roll of flat copper wire? Um, not really Swift Rick, but it's easy enough to make. All you do is you take your regular round copper wire and then you um, just smush it with something. I don't trust any of these being genuine grounds. Too many of these are something else. I'll make my ground here. Hey, thank you Sabatino for your one euro. Thank you very much.
Yeah, Swiftwick, you really don't need to. Like I said, the wire that's this thin, you just run your tweezers over it and it will flatten out. Okay. Hey, Cal. Kalle? Kalle from Finland. Welcome. Glad you could join us. Alright, so we've got our ground. We've got our positive. Now we're going to need something maybe a little more convincing than that smidge. I'm going to have to find uh, my box of wire. Box of wire. Box of wire. Wire? Let's see. Nope, that's electronic components. Ah. A whole box of wire containing so many lost hopes and dreams. Nope, wrong comb. And I never have truly the wire that I want. Um, I did have a, I think it was about a 28 gauge silicon flex and instead I've got this, this feels like 24 to be honest and it's honestly it's like spaghetti and I'm just looking for my start and end on this I guess what I can do, ah, there we go, universe just played into my hands again sucker I was about to threaten it with just cutting it randomly in the middle There you can see it's ludicrously heavy for even this task. This is all stuff from my model aircraft days. the syringe shakes is because it's just when you're trying to squeeze this flux out you yeah it is you're straining and it just makes your fingers shake with the strength of uh, straining the effort of straining rather Yeah, lots of boxes of unfinished dreams. Standard thing for anyone in the, anyone over their twenty or thirties. There we go. And as an added security measure, I'm going to put another piece of captain tape on that because you know that if I don't, the moment something's going to happen and I'm going to react without thinking. And I'm going to snag that wire, and it's going to rip that end cap off. Uh, Kev's crazy life. This is really, to be honest, only going to be for the purpose of eliminating the short. And, um, yeah, that's it. It's not really going to be a repair to keep using the phone type scenario. I don't tend to believe in those too much. Okay. I'm probably going to start at 1 volt and um, 250 milliamps, I think. 1 volt. We'll see how we go. Uh, we've got our leads. I do like these leads. They are superb leads. They're a little expensive, but they're fantastic. And I love the fact that they're interchangeable tips. So, like, You've got this great big, you know, beautiful alligator type clip. Hey, look, there's bugs in there. God damn. I have to charge them rent. And then it pulls apart and comes off, and you've got this nice banana. 
and on the back of the banana you can plug in other bananas just is very handy to have these and certainly the alligator style clips are much better than the usual classic alligators uh, let's see voltage down to one volt please we're not going to see more than one volt anyway and current I don't want to see more than 500 we'll start at 300 fun thing is, wherever this lights up, we're going to have to drill down again. Okay, you got power output going on. Yep, just turn off. Okay. Really, I probably should have put the ground up here. But, no, oh well. Next to the M. Okay, what M? Where's the M? There's no M, unless you mean the sideways E's. Between M and 33. Okay, Jason's got his $2 on this area here. M with a circle. Oh, right. God, I'm a moron. Okay, this here is Jason Vilmer's spot of proposal. Uh, there, oh gosh, I can't pronounce your name. Gregor's Chapeka or something like that. Okay, so it's there. And we do our instant. Okay, point two three. We've got heat building up, but it's not showing up yet. So I'm going to give it a little more current. Seven hundred. So here we go. Jason's not far off. I can. Oh. You're a little off there, Jason. You didn't make the conversion, Jason. Your team lost. You kicked outside of the goalposts. All English-speaking friends just call me Gregor. I was going to wonder whether that would be what it would come down to. Okay, so... There. Let's show you the blood. I don't know why I did that. It's, that was silly. Let's verify it. Damn it. I need two hands here. Oh wait, I've got two hands. I was born with two hands. X marks the spot. So Jason, do you know what part it is in there? Or is this going to be a bit of interesting exploratory surgery? That's a filter. If it's a filter, then where's the short? So what's actually causing the short? You don't know where the real short is? My god, man. And you call yourself a professional? Hey, Indrix Hegdrog. We're just yelling at Jason Vilmer at the moment. I do love this little diamond tip. It was com fairly expensive, but it's definitely worth worth it because it doesn't it doesn't tend to skittle out everywhere. And it goes well with this battery powered Dremel.
Running the whole thing down to the balls, problem solved. Yeah, I tend to agree. Okay, I can see... Alright, that's an RF filter. That little blue one you can see. And look at all the beautiful glitter that I've created. Alright, let's put the power back on and see if it's the blue one that's suffering. does look like it. So I kind of need to back up a little bit here. Uh, could be the power stage of the Wi-Fi, I'm unsure. I mean, really, who does know, other than the people who manufactured this? And they're probably horrified by the fact that I'm even digging into their secrets. Probably running around screaming, going, no, he's going to discover the true location of El Dorado. It's in California. Also known as Apple Headquarters. And you'll find yourself a few trillion dollars there. Yeah, Jason, I've um, I've had a a six now and then that you just sort of grind the hell out. The the six ones that I've had, the um, LDO is actually upside down, either that or it's just simply a die that they've put in there without actually any encasing and you bust that out and it works fine and nothing else you, I don't even know what it does I mean it must have some function but no idea what maybe it's the Apple phone home chip hey Keith uh, some Australian know this is actually like an RF filter. I'm just going to try and see if I can dislodge it without doing any external damage. And then see which side the short sits on. We could technically chase this short around the board. I'm getting close to the circuit board now. Now obviously I can't use hot air to get this out. So I'm just trying to be a good archaeologist here and gently dig my way around the dinosaur bone without disturbing too many other features around it. Hey James Robson, how's it going? Vice grips, right, yes, I'll get the vice grips. Where do you come up with this stuff, Jason? Really? Must be all that Florida sunshine and beach living. 
giving your brain time to just kick back and come up with ludicrous suggestions. Circuit board's got to be pretty damn close down here. No, I don't really want to dig in too much. By the way, anyone who's watched um, the Netflix Witcher series, how many of you suffered the timeline issue until about the fifth episode? Because that really threw me. It completely blew my brain because I was like, why do these people look familiar? They're supposed to be dead. What's going on? Okay, there's the start of the board. I am looking forward to season two. I haven't played the game or read the books, so for me it was nice not being disappointed by anything. Oh, Cormac has decided that he doesn't like The Witcher. Let's all now hate on Cormac because he doesn't go along with what I like. Boo! <laughs> I gotta admit, the first two or three episodes did take a while to you know, really sink in, but I was happy not to be doing anything with my life at that time. So, Witcher it was. Oh, come out, ye little piece. It's time to meet your unmaker. Seriously, you don't want to come out? What a pain. Yeah, I'm sure my DC power supply could do something. Oh, you want me to put power to it and then just lift it out? Alright, let's try that. Let's see if Jason's little theory goes. I'm not going to dremel it. With a fatter lead. Yeah, let's, let's see. Let's push it to 900 milliamp. It's kind of, yeah, I'm kind of pushing my luck there a bit. 800. 900. 800. Sprinkle some baking soda on it. We're not forging, damn it. Oh, wait, no, that's borax that I was thinking of. Jason, you're no fun, mate. It's not even melting. You took a... You... You know, you just raised my hopes of something interesting and then dashed them so expertly. So, so expertly. There I was thinking it was going to be fun. Uh, no, it's not clear in the short. I'm, I know some people do like those short killers. I'm definitely not a fan. I cannot do the Jessa Jones... Yeah, that ain't coming out just a Jane style. I understand, of course, she didn't strictly uniquely create that concept, that style of things, but she certainly likes to promote it. Sucker don't want to come out. I am curious, we should be able to tell which side the short is on by the fact that this is generating the heat. So it's the most resistive element in the set, uh, in the series. So if we... What's going on? Give me... Oh no, that's right, yeah. I mean daft. So one shot, one shade should be much lower than the other. 
Zero the health. Zero? Oh, here we go. Okay, so 1.71 on that side. And 1.21 on this side. So whatever, if given that this isn't technically the short, it's further along here somewhere. I am putting a tremendous amount of force on that. I'm not being at all subtle with the amount of force. The blade will effectively will break before that part pretty much comes out. No, I'm not drumming it. It's my um, dream to get that out properly. Yeah, that's right, Jason. It's not enough until the tip breaks. Wait, you talking about this? Can't tell with you. Ah, uh, Marcera, you're, you're missing the point of... Actually, I shouldn't say you're missing the point. I understand, you're right, yes, my sir, if I dremel the middle of it, it's definitely going to come out. But you see, the conquest here for me is to get it out without resorting to extremely violent measures. That is my current life goal. You're right, if, if I wanted to absolutely get this out, no questions asked, then Dremel it in would be what's happening, yes. Besides, this makes it more irritating to people. Okay, we've definitely hit base ground over there. Thanks, Linux Dog, appreciate it. Okay, let's go with the hot solder method again. Except I need to get my tweezers ready. Honestly, I cannot believe this thing. Yarr, I feel it come out. It is now safely encased in a big blob of solder. Look, it's an amalgam feeling. Curious that I can't really see any pads. Okay. Let's drop a flux down there and see what happens. Just poke our soldering iron tip down there. 
Let's see if anything. Okay, so there's one pad. And there's the other pad. Beautiful. Well, that's what I call a nice extraction. Ah, oh, Warren, you're no fun. And we no longer have a short. Now let's see what side actually is the short. Let's verify. Because I, this is like reality TV where they make you wait a whole episode for one single statement. Yeah, so the short's on this side here. And that's more normal there. <sighs> oh, it's so tempting to go chasing this. I think what I'll do is I'll see how it goes. If I get the data off this, then great. And um, if it's non-functional, then maybe I can come back and dig further and find out what the real part is that's actually at fault. I think that short may lead you to another internalized save. Probably would, yeah. I mean, I could drop it in and see what happens, but I think I really should. Oh, I think I should really be responsible at this stage and check the status of the phone. Yeah, you know, remove this wire, all that sort of stuff, and just make sure that the customer's information is preserved because while it's fun to do this stuff to your own phone you got to remember this is also working life all right well, that was fun now I see why dentists like their jobs that or they enjoy people screaming I'm not sure which yet move the wire what are you talking about oh yeah i mean i can move it to the next point but i've got that just sitting over here for when it comes up okay let's stick this back into the chassis and see if we get some life i suppose i can just put the screen on we don't need much else and then we can put the power lead in Hey, come back, you out of here. All right. Enjoy. Let's put a bit of paper under there so that we don't do any stupid short out. Okay. Output. Zero milliamps being drawn. Press the start button. And we're stuck at... Oh, there we go. I actually panicked there for a minute because I got stuck on 75 milliamp for a second. And I thought, that's it. It's gone to DFU mode. We're doomed. Uh, Swift Rick, I think it all comes down. Each... You know, I find Samsung's to be difficult. So it's, it's just a matter of what you get used to. Just looking under the privacy filter here. No, I haven't excavated that um, filter back on. All right, zoom enabled. I don't know why. Unable to purchase. What's it doing?
Okay, Wi-Fi. Let's see if we get any network showing up. Okay, we do. We've got my network showing up. That's hilarious. It's a little bit weak, but that could be because it's out of the chassis. Touch seems intermittent. Could be because of my... Oh, it's got a poorly fitted tempered glass over the top. So I'd say that's probably what's causing it. No, wrong number. There we go, join. Move closer and try again. Really? It's actually saying that nowadays. Move closer and try again. Oh, fine. Oh, well, it, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Let's see. General... No. Accessibility. Well, this is all new to me. Uh, home button. Where's the... I have not seen this before. This is new to me. Uh, assistive touch, right. Device. Lock screen. Press and hold. Slide. Antenna should do the trick. Mm. Yeah, AJ Moran, if... Uh, I probably won't get the opportunity to do so. I think this person will probably take their phone and keep using it. it almost, it's kind of sad because it would be nice to know where the rabbit hole goes. And I'm not really willing to risk the functionality of their phone in order to... I mean, I want to, but I'm not willing to. If it was a more beaten up phone and this was definitely a data recovery only situation then yeah I would what I would do is get the data off and then come back and um, <coughs> pursue to see the, what the next one is so it's a bit sad because it's an opportunity lost to discover something new I just want to verify that the Wi-Fi does in fact pick up once I've re-established these connections even though this one here is as far as I know 3G 4G whatever uh, no this wasn't this was a worst case scenario becomes a data recovery job but first move is to try and restore it to functionality I bet you the battery's damn flat though let's see 1.29 1 amp yeah damn it battery's flat ok we're going to have to wait a little bit for this to come up probably not much more than five minutes hopefully gives me a chance to put some stuff away put up there and catch up with what's going on in the chat ah there's schematics for the phone do they show the potter components separately unfortunately they don't Kelly. Andre, I think the reason why you can get away with um, using the Dremel on it is because it is a solid potted mass. So the individual, comp the vibrations that it's experiencing, it experiences throughout the whole monolith. So it, um, there's no air gaps between the parts, so they can't individually vibrate. Instead, the whole lot moves as a single mass. Henceforth, you don't tend to get the um, individual leg breakages or anything like that. Where the risk can be is maybe you might cause fatigue on the um, pads between the module and the main circuit board. 
By removing the filter, the phone no longer has passcode or iCloud credentials. Unsure if Jason is talking bull to me. Do you put conformal coding over the chip to protect the chip? I will put a little drop on there just to um, cover it up. But really, it's no different to perhaps um, any other exposed pads around on the circuit board anyway. Jason, are you talking bollocks to me about the whole Apple ID thing and whatnot? Jason is joking there. So this is the downside of when you don't do a particular repair like this as your daily thing. And you have people that you revere and look up to and expect to um, get professional guidance from, such as Jason, is that they get high on that kind of power and they start doing jerky things like that to make people like me get all freaked out. Uh, fortunately, I have my way of getting him back. I'm going to send him some delightful dancing Asian girls and um, he's going to have a lot to answer for when that turns up. Ah, you got Oh yeah, everyone's coming up. Mm-hmm. Hey DC, morning, Atlanta, Georgia. Funny thing I've got, you mixed up 4S, Rostam script. Yes, um, that is surprisingly common in happening. I got a couple of people today messaging me saying, hey, you got to check out this sort of stuff for the building and whatnot. And I'm like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not Jason S. The easiest way to tell us apart is one, I'm not in New York I'm, and I've got an Australian accent. The second one is, if you think of Jason, uh, Paul S, not Jason, if you think of Paul S, S stands for smooth, meaning smooth head, smooth scalp. He doesn't have hair on his head much. Whereas me, I've got a freaking mane sort of thing, you know, I've got a bun on the back that, well, it's not a bun, but, so yeah, hair, no hair, big difference. He also is military, I'm a pacifist. Except when it comes to animal abusers, in which case I will most certainly not be a pacifist. I'll take this and I'll stick it up their teeth and grind them out until they die from the agony. Ah, the pleasures. Yeah, animal abusers get no, no chances with me. S as in bald. Now I wasn't going to say that because I don't think he's bald. I think he just willingly shaves his head. I saw an Apple logo come up there and now it's not. What's going on? I did see an Apple logo but it hasn't come up now. Hey Tony Nash. Yeah, flooded me trying to connect to Wi-Fi. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. It came up Apple logo and then it stopped. Which as you can imagine causes me a fair degree of concern. So I'm going to plug it back into the flex and see what's going on because nothing we've done should have actually caused that to behave that way. Nope, something else is amiss here. I'm now stuck at 39 milliamp. That's almost like an ITC failure. So something else is amiss here. Hmm. It's a fried egg. Hmm. Yeah, the universe, I mean, we saw it come up before. Okay, I'm just going to disconnect the dock flex, just in case that's influencing it. Maybe it's been a Rossman. Seventy-five. Okay. One of the docks got something wrong with it as well. Hmm. 
Maybe try star failure. Everything's a try star failure. Everyone loves try star failure. It's like the phone could be on fire, melting, and everything. Someone go oh, change try star, bro. Uh, Paul is secretly a Jedi in real life. Yeah, I don't think so. That that's too goody good two shoes. See if it wants to be a data recovery phone so you can go down the rabbit hole, yeah. Can we have a MacBook repair after this? I would gladly do a MacBook repair, except for the fact no one sent me a MacBook that I can repair at the moment. I'm all out. Uh, touch is intermittent on this too, I've noticed. So something is... And it's got false key presses going on. Lagging. Yeah, lagging bad. Something's interfering with the... Okay, Wi-Fi? Could be just a bad screen, I don't know. A... Four. Definitely not a happy. Yeah, I need to get back back this up. It's connected. Uh, something really weird is going on. This may give me a lot of grief with um, trying to get it backed up, but I will do the backup now. So in which case, I really need to finish this stream. Um, I apologize um, that you're going to have to get the short end of the stick. But in this case, I think it's pretty important that um, we get this backed up before anything further happens to it. So I'm kind of curious what else has gone wrong that's just weird that I'll, I'll put one of my known good screens on there just in case but um, yeah, maybe I'll come back at a later day but I don't think it will be tonight because it is starting to get a little bit late so thank you everyone for dropping in thank you very much Jason SDS um, if you aren't a follower of Jason SDS then uh, I do suggest you subscribe to his channel and uh, have a watch of his stuff he's got some pretty funny stuff and educational as well uh, Jason if you want to put in your um, URL on the chat there so everyone can join in that'd be great or just search um, SDS telecom so it'd be good so thank you all I'll see you next time watch out for those dingoes make sure they don't drag you off into the swamp because if you get into the swamp the bunyip will get you too and then life's really bad all right I'll catch us later take care